Welcome to No Limit Engineering. Uh, we've been in business for about 40 years. Actually, this is our 40th year. And we've been in Tennessee for 10 years. So we started in Southern California. I was in, let's see, Norco, Miraloma, Riverside, San Bernardino, four locations that we moved through in Southern California. And finally, when we decided to leave, we, we moved a long ways. We came to Tennessee. <laughs> so we'll show you around a little bit. Um, we're kind of a family run business. My wife, Tina does kind of our front office managing. Uh, she fields a lot of phone calls, does a lot of tech. She's probably the, uh, most knowledgeable in tech calls here. So if you call in and you get hurt, don't think that she can't answer the phone because she knows more than most guys in the hot rod game. So, so, uh, awesome. um, so this is kind of our front office and showroom area. So this is a, this is like a 65, 64, six Chevy pickup chassis that's sitting here. This is the original chassis and this just shows, this is one of our bolt-on IFS suspensions. Uh, changes all the geometry to modern style. We forge our own spindles. Uh, this is our brake assembly, 12 inch rotary caliper, power rack, comes with a sway bar, uh, <clears throat> coilovers. Very easy to align, we use a cam concentric. This is kind of cool. We're kind of some of the only ones that ever do this. You rotate this cam and it's offset and that pushes the A-arm in and out for a camber adjustment. And you slide the entire A-arm and cam assembly either forward or backward to set caster so you can adjust one separate of the other, uh, which makes it super easy to align. And it's cool for guys that want to go racing. If you say, hey, I want to, you know, change the camber some amount at a track or autocross day, you just put a Sharpie mark where it used to be, loosen up the jam nuts, rotate it. Uh, lock it down. You got more camber. When you want to drive it home back to your original setting, put it back to where your sharpie marks were and go on down the road, you're all good to go. So that's kind of cool. This is one of our uh, rear suspensions. We do a lot of four bar and link suspensions. Um, all of our geometry is laid out to give us instant centers and anti-dive that works well with the geometry of a truck. So wouldn't be great in a car, but works awesome in a truck. And that's a big difference between us and a lot of companies that make a car specific component and try to adapt it to everything. We only make truck geometry stuff. Um, so that's what it's for. Um, these are trucks that we've built over the years and cars. Um, that silver bullet truck was one of my first real committed racers. We campaigned that truck for about five years. And in its day, it was one of the fastest trucks in the country road course and autocross. Um, we had a, a truck over here, this orange pickup, the princess that we called it. Um, that was, as far as we know, that was the first truck that won uh, what we would consider the triple crown of, of truck building. It was uh, good guys truck of the year in 04. It was uh, top truck at F100 Super Nationals. And it was top commercial at the LA Roadster Show all in the same year. So up to our knowledge before we did that, no one else had ever done that. Um, that was an awesome truck and an awesome build and, and the customer was great. And I never want to do that again. <laughs> all right. Uh, That's awesome. You, and and I, I have a lot of respect for guys that do these top level builds that are Street Machine of the Year or Riddler or Amber cars because the level of detail that goes into them is far beyond what anybody understands. And, you know, you're, you're putting something together and you look at it and it's just not perfect. So you have to take it out and redo it again. And you do that 10 times. You do it during prep, you do it during fabrication, you do it during fit assembly, you do it after paint, you just keep fixing it. And it's just, I'm not built for that, man. I want to build it and get it and drive it and run it. And so, it was fun and I don't want to do that again. <laughs> you know, our Hellboy project, that was the next generation after the Silver Bullet. Um, I still have that truck. We campaigned it solid for about 12 years. It's won more events as a truck than any other truck has ever won. So, uh, and it will be hard to, the competition is a little tougher now. So it's going to be hard for anybody to ever beat the record that that truck created. Um, so that's kind of cool. I'm very proud of that. This is F100 I built in the, in the early nineties and it was on the cover of truck and magazine in 91. 
And, uh, you know, first day it was pretty wild, had a blown small block in it, and, and it was kind of cool. This was a project that we did um, with James Hatfield and Metallica as his car. Uh, the body work was all done by Marcel's in Southern California. We did the chassis work and built the floor pans and, and the mechanicals, the underhood, the firewall stuff, and then delivered it to them. They built the rest of it. So this is what the car looked like. It's known as the Black Pearl. This was it in raw metal. Um, it was kind of painted a ghost black, and all the trim was uh, done in copper. It came out gorgeous. Beautiful car. Here's some other stuff we did over the years. I, I'm really kind of proud. I think we have done over 100 tech articles with different magazines over the over the years. Um, we used to have really great relationships when all the magazines were in SoCal and and uh, so we did a lot of tech articles with them on how to stuff. And, and uh, that was kind of fun because we really did help educate the, you know, the population of, of truck guys into what was going on and, and how to get it done. And uh, so that was that was fun. This was cool. This was our first ever, if you're EFI guys, this was the first tune port swap that I did in this panel. We, we built this panel in my very first location in my dad's barn in Norco, where I started out, and uh, the guy bought a wrecked cop car that had a tune port in it, and they were brand new, so like it was just, it was first year the tune ports that came out, I think, I can't read that, uh, this is 95, so I guess tune ports have been out for a year, but it took a little, it took two years to build a panel, so I think that was a 91 motor or something like that, but uh, there were no wiring harnesses available. So this plays right into what you guys do, right? We we took the stock harness and I got a factory uh, print, right? So we laid the factory harness out and started taking away things that we didn't need. And we didn't know if it would run. And it, there was a couple things we missed. But uh, once we got the fuel pressure sorted out, man, it ran like a champ. And, uh, you know, then it was like the next year Ron Francis started coming out with harnesses and and a couple other guys, uh, Howell was one of the very first guys to do it. I don't, I think they're still around. I don't know, but that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> so this is our kind of shipping and receiving area. Uh, we try to keep a lot of product on the shelf. My goal is to ship a part within 48 hours of the order. And most of the time we can get that done. You know, if it's a, if it's a rear suspension package with a housing and axles that takes longer because we don't, I stock a few, but not a lot. So depending on the whip, spline count, or how heavy do they want it, we might have to wait two weeks to get a housing and axles from quick. But uh, otherwise, man, we try to keep keep stuff out. So we have a lot of stuff on the shelf. You know, springs and shocks. These are all like pan hard bars and and rear suspension located. Front suspension cross members are packed, ready to go. Um, Bushing packs and fat bars for rear suspensions, sway bars, more parts are getting ready to package up some uh, rack and pinion conversion kits. And we do stuff like this. We have a customer that wanted, um, we know this guy does some custom stuff. So he gives us the dimensions he wants. These are for a four bar assembly he's building for some custom car. So we just build him what he wants and send it out. So we can do some custom stuff. Um, fuel tanks, trailing arms, front suspension cross members. You know, I wander through here sometimes and think if I could sell it all in a day, I might retire. <laughs> but uh, all this is rear suspension component. Um, so the guys can pick and pull and package up uh, to fit the customer's order without having to wait for parts because we have pretty much everything here. So... This is another area where I, sometimes I don't want to see it because I look at, you know, I know how much the boxes cost. <laughs> it seems kind of crazy. All this stuff that's sitting over here is is already purchased for somebody to order. This is not stock. This is all spoken for. Uh, these are all going for chassis assembly. So it's brakes, gear sets, IRS components, special fuel pumps, um, wh whatever the customers are ordering. You know, this stuff is all stocked up for their chassis. Guy orders a full chassis. We got to build all the pieces, build the chassis, 
But everything is assembled and pre-fitted to make sure it's right. So we even do an alignment on them to make sure that the everything on the front suspension is dialed in. Uh, we square up the rear axles and center them so that we know it's all good. So when we ship them out, the customer already knows it's dialed in. You know, um, so all our chassis get plumbed uh, before they leave. Fuel, brake plumbing is standard. We can do fuel line plumbing if they want it. Anyway, and this is a a lot of people kind of kind of smirk at this. I'll bet I'll bet thirty five to forty percent of our chassis orders get a trailer hitch option. Um, I don't know if we're the only ones that offer a trailer hitch, but I, maybe some of those do. But uh, I always get a kick out of what they want to tow. Like we have a guy that built a really cool F one down in Florida, and he has a like a eighteen foot Chris Craft runabout. It's like a nineteen fifty six. You know, it looks like Jackie O should be in it. And he take, he purposely puts the two together. He uses the F1 to take his Chris Craft to the dock and drop it in the wall. And that just has to be cool as heck. That guy's wins for the day, right? Yeah. So you saw some of the finished fuel tanks uh, over the side. This is all fuel tank parts that are pre-made, um, shells and whatnot. So we can turn them out on a quick basis. So this is the real fab area. Um, and we basically, we do some tube work of bending and fitting tube, but we're, we're flat material guys, pretty much. You know, we start with big sheets of flat material. We make small pieces out of them, and then we bend these up and shape them and weld them and grind them off to what we want and make parts. Of course, then we use those parts to keep adding them back together to make bigger pieces. So I always joke, people go like, what do you do for a living? And I'm like... I take big pieces of metal and cut them to small pieces, and I take all the small pieces and put them back together into big pieces. That's what, that's what we do. This is for a chassis that we're building. We also do a lot of housing and axles for guys that are doing it, their stuff at home. They're gonna use our rear suspension, but they want a new housing and axle, so we can pre-fit the brackets to them and send them out. Um, so it makes it easier for them. Harley here is one of our young guns. It's a great welder. He's putting together some IRS components right now. Yep. These are all uh, these are all the cradle sections for IRS units. So we try to do batches. This is a small batch unit. We do about ten of these at a time. We don't really have the shelf space to do a whole lot more than that at one shot. It is. So this is something you won't see in here very often. This is a factory chassis for a. Uh, two-wheel drive square body blazer oh, wow. and when we get ready to build chassis you know you can source GM spec measurements and you can get measurements on the internet and designs and whatnot and then you get the real thing and they're always a little different than than the true measurements so when we build our fixtures for building chassis we use all three of those pieces of information so we can get them really right so the body fits 100% the body mounts fit, the bumpers fit, the core sport's in the right place, motor's in the right place, you know. So, it, and from that, we're gathering information. This is one of our fixture tables. Um, <clears throat> looks like gonna be an IRS chassis. These are the front frame rails and they'll lock into this. There's a mid rail that connects to here and then the rear rail is coming up. Those IRS cradles will fit in, all the cross members. Everything that goes into the chassis locates on the fixture table as some mounting point. So we don't really actually use a tape measure when we build a chassis because everything locks into a specific point. You can't get it in the wrong place. All these parts are kind of, <clears throat> this is in the big, big, big section. I told you, you know, we start with flat metal and we make small parts, right? You know, like that. And then we keep putting small parts together to make bigger parts. And then those keep getting added together until we have a component that's ready to ship. So it's kind of... So there's 14 pieces in this cross member to make it. My right? goodness. So at one point there were 14 flat pieces that all came out of one big sheet, right? And we fold them all up and put them all back together into one piece. And, and, and then they become this, where they have the uprights on them, where there's... Four, eight, uh, ten more parts. There's 24 parts on that. Actually, there's 28 parts on that. 
and they got to get the upper coil over mounts and a couple more tabs. So I think there's like 36 parts by the time they're done. We really focus on a lot. We try to consider that it's a signature, the style of weld that we do. Um, yeah. We want it to be a beautiful part of the chassis and the component as well. So, so this is a chassis, I'm gonna tell you, this is a 47 to 54 Chevy pickup, what we call a retro eight. This is a raised rail, it's kicked up higher to sit real low, air ride. And this one's sitting here, it's ready to go to powder coat, so. Can you tell, just by looking at a chassis, what, what yeah. the car is? Yeah. Oh yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. I mean, maybe it's just cause I'm a young guy and just like getting into this, but I think that's beyond. Yeah. That's so cool. But they all have like these, these chassis originally were narrow in the front and very wide in the back. So it has these pods out here to get out for the bumper mounts and the bed mounts to make them wider. And I can see that the front is pinched in very narrow, so I know what it is. I could tell you all these here, so I'll go through. There's four chassis here. That's 55 to 9 Chevy, 47 to 54. That's a square body. That's another square body Chevy pickup. That one took me a minute because it's upside down. So back here, when I was talking about space for things, um, there's four, five, six, 10, 14, 17, no, there's one more. So right now we have 18 chassis back here. These chassis are what we call pre-builds. So they're about 90% done. They don't have motor mounts or trans mounts in them and they don't have a fitted rear axle in them. But they're pretty much ready to go. And these are our most common chassis that we sell. And so when, when the guys are not super busy, we just build more chassis if we have all the parts, right? And then when some guy calls in and goes, hey, I want a, want a raised rail chassis for my square body, our questions are what motor trans you're gonna run and what rear tire size you wanna do so we can match the rear axle width to it, what brakes you wanna run. That chassis can leave in about three weeks. So our, our delivery time gets cut way down instead of being five months, six months, or our standard build, if we don't have one in stock, is a 10 to 12 week. If we have one on the floor, it's three to four weeks. That's so cool. Right? So, and that can be huge, you guys in shops that, that you know, we work with a lot of builders that really got to keep things moving. You know, that makes a big deal to them. So, 